Now let's take a look at the materials and how those were uh, you know, applied on the ground object. We talked that there were data channel uh, modifiers up the stack in, in three places and how they're affecting the texture. The textures themselves are simply being created with tileable textures. So each of them is being loaded with a tileable texture and those textures are really, really simple. In this case, the textures were painted in Photoshop by myself. They're uh, utilizing the, the tiling feature that's in Photoshop, so they're completely seamless and will all you know, blend together as it's tiled around. So it's using these three here. Now, we're going to uh, talk about the triplanar that I'm using, but this is the same idea as if you're used to using the world align material in Unreal Engine, for instance, it's being projected in three different directions. I'm going to talk about how to install custom OSL nodes, and it's really easy. They're free because OSL stands for Open Shading Language, and so you can get all kinds of uh, different shaders to be able to utilize in 3ds max or you know maya and other softwares so i'm loading three of those and they are loading of course and they're projecting the texture from three different directions in the space of the object now i'm doing a bit of a color correction here on the ground one to darken it up a little bit and then i have two interpolate nodes and interpolate is just sort of a you know fancy way of saying blending them together so there's an input track and that input track allows you to be able to input a grayscale value that will blend between the min and the max if the input value is black or zero it will give you the min value if it's white it'll give you the max value white being one essentially now what we can see coming in here is i have an osl um, uvw channel and that is utilizing map channel 2. So it's using a, uh, an unwrap channel to be able to unwrap textures in. But really, an unwrap channel is just a bunch of numbers. So that's all it is. It's, you know, it's the same RGB, UVW, XYZ. They're all exactly the same, just three sets of numbers being stored. So what I'm doing is I'm utilizing um, channel two uh, as values to be able to place into the interpolates as the mixing amounts. Now, if you notice, I've got an R and G. So when you're blending uh, textures together, you simply need a single channel, an 8-bit channel. So it's a grayscale channel. You don't need R, G, and B. You need simply one of them to be able to use. Now, the first one's using R, and it's blending together the grass and the uh, stone. And then the uh, G is uh, utilizing the, uh, you know, layering on top the dirt. And I'm doing a bit of a color correction for the bump map and push some contrast and stuff, and it's being placed into the ground. So where do the data channels come in? So as we go up, we can see that soft selection is creating the soft selection here, and it's passing that up the stack by the fact that you can see the vertices passing up the stack. Data channel now is grabbing that selection, which is in all RGNB, okay? And it has a vertex input. If we say, um, you know, add operator, we have vertex input. Uh, we have a clamp, which we have right here. And then we have the outputs at the bottom, the vertex output. So the vertex input is inputting the vertex selection. So it's pulling those colors from X, Y, and Z, because that's what the um, volume select is outputting. Now, the clamp is clamping this value just in case between a value of 0 and 1, uh, in case it's going over or below. It may not be needed in some cases, but I like to put it in there just to be sure. And then the vertex out is taking those vertices and it's mapping them into the channel two of the unwrap effectively into the X. And so where that came into play was right here. There's our channel two and X being the same as R. RGB, XYZ, UVW. So it's the first channel and it's being used to blend these two together. So whenever the selection changes, whenever the selection changes here by moving around our selection object, it's automatically coloring the vertices 
and then it's eventually being optimized down and the optimize is respecting those channels and it's coloring it correctly. Now the exact same thing is happening with the uh, data channel in this case right here, but in this case the output is uh, been set to replace and it's replacing into the Y. And so this is replacing into the X, this is replacing into the Y. And then the third one is taking it and it's adding it to the Y. So it's actually adding it and placing it in with the uh, Y channel. So I use an add because if it was on um, uh, replace, it's going to remove the you know, results elsewhere. You can see that the river is no longer correct. So I can go ahead and play with different values to be able to see what I'm looking, you know, going to get. So this is an add, and it's adding it in there. So perfect. Now I have the the ability to be able to have dirt and grass and stone wherever is necessary. So the grass itself is the default color, and the dirt and the stone is being mixed in with the colors of the vertices that are being stored in map channel two. So that's the reasoning for this data channel to be in here, is just to grab the selections and be able to pass them into single channels. Those single channels could be utilized over in your game engine to be able to you know color them there with shaders if you wanted of course I'm doing it right here in max in real time with OSL